Hello everyone, it's time for a very exciting book video and it's very overdue so I have so many books to talk about so I don't even want to do a long intro. I'm just gonna get right into it because I haven't done a reading wrap up since April. It's now August and I usually do them monthly so I have a lot to catch up on and in this video I'm gonna be telling you every single book I've read in May, June, and July. I don't know how many books there are. 20 books since my last wrap up which is why I waited so long because like I knew that I wasn't reading a lot and I could do it all in one video so let's get into it. I've read such good books since that last wrap up and I've talked about them in book recommendations since then since it's been so long. So you probably already heard me talk about these books but this is just so they're all in one place. I know you guys like to see like in order what I've read. So the beginning of May I read Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. Basically love in other words in a different font. Not even in a different font just like in italics. <laughs> it's basically the same book, which is why I liked it, because Love in Other Words is one of my favorites. I'm gonna try to give like brief summaries of these books instead of like the usual long-winded ones I give. So this is Childhood Friends to Estranged to Lovers. It has a trope I don't really like, but I love the book anyway. Past and present perspective, second chance romance, set at a lake house. And there's good quotes in here and just a really good book. Oh my god, it feels so good to be holding books again. I haven't done this in so long. A lot of my books are in a storage unit. So I don't have all of them, but I have a few. The next book I read is Book Lovers by Emily Henry, which was her new release. I have the British one because I was living in the UK. Such a good book. I would read Emily Henry's shopping list. I love everything she's ever written. It's set in a small town, rivals in the workplace, great banter, great chemistry, great male character, great female character, great quotes. I loved it. Let me read you a quote to convince you to read it. Nora, you're in books. Of course you don't have a life. None of us do. There's always something too good to read. Charlie Laster, I love you. After that, I read Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. Didn't love it as much as I thought I would because it was very, very highly talked about, but it was still good and I still recommend it. Basically about this girl who's an interviewer who interviews her celebrity crush and pulls him. Like every 13 year old girl's Wattpad fantasy, but in a real book. It basically shows her interviewing him and then interviewing him again 10 years later. They didn't see each other in between, but they had like really good chemistry. I don't know, I didn't feel the chemistry as much. I was kind of like, do these people even know each other? But I liked it anyway. By the end, I was a shipper, but like throughout the whole book, I was like, they literally spent like one day together and then 10 years passed. How do they even remember that? Because I know that I don't remember what happened a year ago, much less 10 years ago. So, but they kept the spark alive somehow and reunited and it was good. And and I really like the cover, so. Okay, then I read The Infinity Between Us by N.S. Perkins. I don't have a physical copy, but I was on a binge of reading books set at summer houses, which I did an entire video on. So I read a bunch in a row and this is one of them. And it's just like you would expect. Childhood friends to enemies to lovers reunite because they both inherit this house. It's kind of like that one Nicholas Sparks movie. You know what I'm talking about where they both inherit that house? So yeah, then they reunite and they are trying to work through this big thing that happened between their families that caused them to not like each other and stop talking. Yeah, it was good. Then I read a book that's been on my TBR for, I shit you not, like three years. Actually, I don't know if it was that long, but a really long time, which was Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. It has been on my TBR because it's academic rivals to lovers, and the only academic rivals I've ever read were Rose and Connor from the Addicted Callaway Sister series, so I knew I needed that in my life because that just sounds like an amazing trope. It just felt a little immature to me. I don't know if it's YA, but set in high school, main guy and girl are the two smartest people in their school. They're competing to be valedictorian. They've always been rivals all throughout high school. They like banter her and have all these like arguments but like you can tell that they actually really like each other even though they act like they hate each other and then it's the end of their senior year and their whole grade is like playing this game and they end up teaming up becoming allies because they're like the two smartest ones you know and it's their romance it was good but i think it's for a younger audience and not what i normally would reach for wholesome and cute and just a sweet romance then i read my policeman by Beth Ann roberts my last upload was a reading vlog of this so i'm not going to talk about it really but i liked it you can see all my reactions i didn't always like it it was back and forth but the reason i read it is because it takes place in brighton which is where i was just studying abroad and living i literally was like reading sitting at this location and Harry Styles is gonna be in the movie adaptation as the main character, so it was just perfect for me to read, and it was my last upload, so if you wanna watch me reading it, it was like kinda spoiler-free. Eh, I like talk about the plot. I don't like tell you like the big spoilers. Um, You can watch that reading vlog. I gave like a whole tour of every place they talk about in this book in the actual setting because I was living there. But yeah, it is basically a story of like being gay but when it was like illegal and there's like a wife and all that. You should probably read it before the movie comes out if that sounds interesting to you. Then I read Normal People by Sally Rooney and you're probably like this is the thousandth time you've mentioned reading Normal People by Sally Rooney in a reading wrap up. I don't want to hear it. I reread it every few months and this time I actually had a reason 
one I annotated it fully for one of my really good friends Ellie and I vlogged the entire thing of me annotating it reading the quotes reading the entire book I'll link that as well this is just a huge promo video but that was one of my favorite things I've ever done so yeah <laughs> then immediately after that the summer I turned pretty TV show was coming out so I read the book I read all three I also did a reading vlog of reading the entire summer I turned pretty series in one sitting with all of my thoughts and all of my hate and all of my love and all of my complaints and all of my criticisms so you can go watch that but I love the show so after that I remembered how much I love reading series and I was like I don't allow myself to read series because I'm usually recommending books and it's harder to recommend series because usually I'll like the fourth book the most and then in my videos I'll have to be like oh this is the fourth book in a series and then no one wants to read it because like why would you wait till the fourth book but I love reading companion novel series specifically but I never allow myself the pleasure to indulge in a good long series and I decided that this summer screw it I'm gonna let myself read some series so I read some like back to back and I'm really glad I did because it like brought me back to how much I love it and I'm definitely gonna allow myself to read more series now I don't know why that's such a thing in my brain is just read standalones recommend standalones but I am a series stan and I always have been and so many of my favorite books are because they're part of series so I read a series that's been on my TBR for a while it's the Royal Hearts Academy series by A. Jade I have three out of the four books they're big before I recommend these they're definitely problematic in like things that they say I was like that doesn't feel right to me but it was one of those things where you like kind of had to look over a lot to just enjoy the romance like it was nothing like unbearably bad but it was like mm. I don't know if that sits right with me. I'm a little bit, not sensitive, you know what I mean. Like some things I'm just like, ooh, I would never date that man, you know? Which is definitely how I felt about a lot of these books, but they were good romances and like very, very entertaining. Every chapter ended with something so dramatic and unrealistic happening that you were like, how are these characters possibly going through this much drama in such a short amount of time? But you know, who wants to read about anything realistic? Not me. So first book is The Cruel Prince. This is childhood friends to enemies to lovers. Classic like cliche, why are you enemies? There's no reason to be hating each other this much, but but with really protective, but very like brooding and kind of mean guy because he like hates her. They were like in love when they were kids and it's them going back to their roots, falling in love again. And then that boy's brother gets a book and it's called Ruthless Night. And this one is about the boy super, super popular like quarterback of the football team. And then the girl is like super smart, but she gets made fun of because she's overweight. And this is the book that I was like, this doesn't sit right with me because he literally bullied her in front of the whole school for being overweight. And I was like, Ew, I hate him because I, I could never forgive him for like the things he said about her But really he liked her the whole time But he was like trying to like keep up his image like that bullshit So it's a bully romance, but like an actual bully where I was like ew trigger warning There's like eating disorder talk drug abuse. I think that's it Just things that like I wish I knew before I read it, you know, but yeah, that's that one There was a small book called wicked princess and I hated it i didn't even buy the physical copy i was like i don't even want that because they teased this one couple the entire series and then we got to her book it was the sister of those two boys and it wasn't the couple that they teased they made her with this guy that was like the villain that i hated in all the other books and i was like no this is not okay what happened to them teasing the whole brother's best friend trope which is then what we finally got in this one this is the two brothers best friend they finally gave us their romance after she gets a novella falling in love with someone else so it's like she starts this book in a different relationship she was like mean and a bully and a, like a bad bitch the other books but she had a soft spot for him so i thought we were gonna get reverse grumpy sunshine we didn't she got amnesia and became nice is that a spoiler i don't think it's a spoiler because on the back said she can't remember anything so i'm just gonna say it but yeah this was their romance the brothers do not want them together at all because oakley the brother's best friend um is involved in a lot of sketchy stuff uses drugs yeah that was their book not my favorite series but I really was entertained throughout the whole thing and I think I read like these fat books in like two days each so yeah those are those four books I've been waiting to talk about this since I've read it because it was so special when I annotated normal people for my friend Ellie she annotated her favorite book for me which is Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings and it's just so sweet like I have all her notes in here and this is the first book in a series that's ongoing and I was like I don't know if I'm gonna like it because she's warned me she's like it's so toxic it's not like cute romance don't go into it with your romance reader brain go into it with like you're about to watch gossip girl so i i went in like that like not shipping anyone just like okay let's see what this is basically it is exactly what she said it's gossip girl if they were british they're like high society london they're a group of early 20 year olds that grew up together going to boarding school so they're like a family right they're all rich bestest friends such a cute friend group like i love them and i immediately like fell in love with their friend group and like wanted to be a part of it so bad but the drama it is like gossip girl like you're like wait i shipped her with him but i ship her with him 
him, but I don't know who's gonna be together. It was like that. There was never like, oh my god, they're perfect for each other. But this was basically following Magnolia and BJ, who they've been dating since they were like kids, and everyone's like, they're the perfect couple. Kind of giving like Nate and Blair vibes. But then something happens, she finds out about it, and they break up. But they've never like stopped loving each other. It's just they're so toxic now. And he is the worst. Oh my god, cannot get his shit together. He just hurts her and hurts her and hurts her, and then she tries to retaliate, and it's back and forth, and definitely the most toxic thing like I've ever read. But at the same time, I just like wanted him to get his shit together the entire time, which also was giving me Chuck and Blair vibes. I just kept comparing it to Gossip Girl because it was so similar. They get a second book, which just came out. I have it right here, but haven't read it yet. This is like next on my TBR. It's this couple's second book. I'm like, do I even want to read that? Because they annoy me so much because it's like, okay, either you're in love or you're not together. Like pick one, but they can never pick. So if you're in a reading slump and you're like, I want to be mad and I want to be invested and I want to like get sucked into something so addictingly toxic, read Magnolia Parks. And then I read the next book in that series, which is Daisy Hates. Basically, a boy from the friend group was like kind of also in love with the girl from the first book. Like she pulls, right? But then this is his romance with someone else and it's kind of like mafia vibes. I liked this one like so much more just because it wasn't as toxic. Like they actually were together. Um, I shipped them so much and I loved the guy in this. His name's Christian and Ellie told me I was gonna love him and I really, really did. I really hope the entire friend group gets a book because I wanna read about all of them but I just really, really like this one. And I want another book about Daisy and Christian so bad. Thank you, Ellie, for convincing me to read these. Okay, then I read Infamous Like Us by Christian Beckerichi. I don't even want to talk about it. I put this book off for so long because Like Us series by Kristen Beckerichi is a spinoff of Addicted Calloway, my favorite series ever. I loved the Like Us series at first, but then it just started going downhill for me once we got to this girl's book. All the Addicted Calloway sister characters have kids and this series is about their kids. And this girl, I had such high hopes for her because her parents, I love them, they're my faves. And I did not like her character. I don't know why, I just thought she was so like immature and cringy that I couldn't even read it. Like I would get secondhand embarrassment, my toes would curl in disgust at things she would say. Like I just did not like her. And then it's a polyamorous couple, so it's MFM. Um, it was my first time reading that, which I had nothing opposed to that idea, but I hated the way it was done. I just thought it was really immature and like I found myself like feeling like it was like a middle school relationship between these three characters and I just could not look past it. I didn't really like any of them. I feel like they just like kind of ruined these three characters for me and they have three books and this was the last one of their three books. I'm so glad it's over because I only read this because then I read Misfits Like Us which was the next book in the series and this was for a couple that I've been waiting for and anticipating and I really liked the book. I think I'm just a little bit over the bodyguard trope because I've been reading it for what 11 books straight it's starting to feel a little bit forced and unrealistic so I'm excited to see like what happens after this couple if they continue that I don't I hope they don't but I love the series anyway and I have so much love for the characters and I thought it was really cute I think I had different expectations but I still really really liked it and I just love this universe I will continue reading it no matter what <laughs> then I read A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime by Monica Murphy I saw this book being talked about on someone's Instagram so I decided to read it not knowing what the trope was or anything solely because I heard it was a boarding school romance and I was like sign me up I love those I didn't really like it that much basically it's very innocent girl keeps to herself doesn't hook up with any boys doesn't drink doesn't do anything and then the main boy his family owns the school he's super rich and he's like the most popular boy and he's like always hated her but really he's like obsessed with her but I just hated the things he would like say about her like think about her like about wanting to like own her and like corrupt her and like it felt weird some things just like made me a little uncomfortable it's good girl bad boy trope normally I really like that but I didn't like the I don't know I didn't really like it that much in this one and then last but not least I read bad boys break hearts by Michaela Smeltzer this has been on my TBR for years like three years maybe and it's childhood friends to enemies to lovers again can you sense a pattern here I need to stop reading books with this trope because I keep being in my head like oh my god it's so repetitive but it's because I keep choosing to read these books back to back to back like why do I do that I don't know but this one his dad is in a band he's famous and then he goes to this university he's on the baseball team and then one day he sees his childhood best friend at the school who like randomly stopped talking to him when they were like eight and ten years old and he was like in love with her back as much as you can be in love with someone when you're ten he runs into her because she's doing the walk of shame out of his roommate's bedroom and then he decides from that moment on he hates her but eventually you find out why she left 
left when she was eight they rekindle and it's their romance definitely enemies to lovers but like that same trope like why are you enemies like there is no reason to be hating each other like this and it's mostly a one-sided hate like he hates her but yeah those are all the books i've read this summer in may june and july i'm hoping to get back on my monthly reading wrap-up grind now starting for august i had so much fun just like reading on my own time while i was relaxing and doing things and not putting pressure on myself to read a book every single day and this one was different because i was traveling so it's like reading on the plane and on the beach it was just amazing but now i'm back getting ready to start school again and get back to the normal reading grind so stay tuned for all that and all the book videos to come but if you want to follow me on my other social medias they're all linked down below as always post a lot about what i'm currently reading on my instagram stuff like that so yeah i'll see you in my next video very very soon bye